emerging technologies in different business niches. It might also amaze you to know in what various niches these technologies are coming onto. And of course, you are watching Daba TV and this is the Business Leader of the Week. My name is Emeka Eze. And as usual on the Business Leader of the Week, we get to talk with an entrepreneur who's doing really well for himself in his niche, where you get to learn their stories. And if you are an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur, there's something you're going to learn from the Business Leader of the Week and from our guests on the show. But we'll go for a short break and when I am back, I'm going to show you who we have in the studio today, and you are about to learn a lot. We will be right back. Welcome back from that short break. I remain Emeka Eze, and this is the Business Leader of the Week on Daba TV. Before I went on that short break, I talked about emerging business technologies, emerging tech um, development in different business niches. And one person we have in the studio is one who I can call a serial entrepreneur playing in the blockchain and real estate space. I'm talking about none other than Namde Uba. He is the CEO of House Africa, CEO and co-founder of House Africa. And House Africa has been doing amazingly well. We're going to hear from him, but first we would have to beat him. Welcome on the show, Mr. Namde. It's nice to have you on the show. Thank you, Emeka. I'm really glad to have you here. You are someone who, when I read through what your brand is doing, it was catchy for me. And I felt like, no, we're not going to hear this alone. We need to share these stories for people to really know about it. But first, let's meet you. So who is Namde Uba? Okay. Um, thank you, Emeka. Um, and thank you, uh, Daba TV, for, um, for this opportunity. Okay. Like you said, my name is uh, Uba Namde. Um, I, I came from the technology background, having worked with uh, some of the uh, telecoms industries in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, so while working there, I, we had some issues in terms of uh, uh, me personally and my co-founder, where we had uh, some, we were involved in some sorts of uh, property scams. Mm. after buying some lands and we found out that you are not actually the owner, owner of those lands exactly so and that is what actually drives us and this is where we are all right so you you are driven by an exp a bad experience you have in buying and selling of real estate in nigeria mm. which has made you to develop or bring about the house africa as a brand yes so let's start with how long you have been in that sector let's start with that space first really the real estate sector for how long have you been in it <sighs> I've been in the real estate sector for the past three years now. Three years? Yes. And it is within these three years that House Africa sprang up. Exactly. So you want to tell us about House Africa? What does House Africa do? What is House Africa? Okay. House Africa has one single mission, uh, which is uh, allowing the property buyers to access risk-free properties. So the goal is to be able to um, unlock debt assets in Africa so that people can actually, not just buy these properties, but they can also use it then to do other transactions in the, uh, in the sector, such as uh, getting access to loan okay. or using these properties without having any issues. Now that's beautiful. House Africa is helping people to access risk-free properties. I would agree with you because most people are skeptical about buying properties um, in some parts of Africa because of, like you said, being scammed, insecurities around such properties. Yeah. And now you say House Africa offers the opportunity for, let's say, me as an individual to get a risk-free property. I can buy a property and I'm rest assured that it is secure. Yes. How? How, 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 does, how, Africa, how does House Africa do that? Okay. Currently, how we are doing this now is to uh, develop a virtual representation of these properties okay so that people if you're not actually around the where these properties are you can be able to virtually see these properties and we're focusing more on properties in the estates oh okay so now someone in diaspora or someone that let's say the property is in Lagos and you are in Port Harcourt and you want to really buy this property seeing it virtually actually gives you 60 percent conviction to buy this property because okay. you know the exact location it is on the map 
you see uh, the pitch, you see uh, most of the uh, parameters or features of those of the, properties, yeah. then you can make your decisions faster. Okay. <laughs> this is interesting. You talked about seeing a property virtually. I'm in Lagos right now, for example, and I want to access a, a property in Abuja. You're trying to tell me that I have the opportunity to see that property virtually. I, let me get, I want to paint a picture in my head, or there's a picture in my head I'm trying to share with you. Yeah. You know, there is this thing that estate developers do when they, are, when they are projecting for a particular land or space or space. They tell you this is how the estate is going to look. So they give you like a 3D or um, look of how that place really is going to be in the future. Are you saying that House Africa develops or has a space like that where clients or customers or people who are interested in these estates can actually see for themselves what it looks like? Yes, uh, we was, firstly we started doing uh, we started digitizing the layouts first. Okay. So uh, the layout is now placed on the map at exact location of that of property. The, of the property. So you can be able to uh, zoom in the map, zoom out, and see other environment. It's no longer a thing of uh, is beside the uh, yeah. Lekki Toge or beside the. Uh, um, Dangote refinery. So Super you see these away things from so, so, so exactly. So you <laughs> see these things directly within you, and uh, you can be able to make your decisions faster. I will take us back to, a little to one more thing you mentioned initially. You said you've been playing in this industry for three years. Yeah. How did you get in into? It? We want to know. Three years to me in an in an industry that is this big, demanding, and you even bringing technology into it is a lot. How did you get into it? Was it rosy? Was it interesting? Was it easy for you to have gotten this far? How? How did you get into it? <laughs> it's not easy. And these three years, I can, I can only tell you that these three years is more of learning. Okay. Trying to understand the market before okay. I can even be able to bring out a product. Because like I told you, I had a bad experience. Oh, and okay. I'm looking at what's the best way to solve this problem. And, uh, and this is... We started by doing a lot of things, moving from uh, doing so many pivots to be able to understand what exactly and how we can be able to tackle this. Looking at the uh, the sec looking at the sector that we are, which is very difficult, and uh, and it's very manual too. So how do we bring in, in technology into it and still maintain the normal processes of how things are being done? So and that is why we started from this approach now. Okay, so th th that's, that's, that's an interesting one for me. You are using technology to solve real estate problems. Yes. It interests me to know that. Can you be specific or highlight the particular pr problems that House Africa is solving so that whoever is listening or watching this can really imagine or see the possibilities of, you know, trying to look at what this space looks like for them? Okay, one is, uh, there's something we say, we always say seeing is believing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with the, virtual, uh, with the virtual technology that we are in now, in the blockchain space, we call it metaverse, mm -hmm. where uh, you have a connection between a virtual world and the physical world. So we bring these two worlds together in one platform so that when you virtualize these properties, you, and you buy them, you actually own them physically in the real life. In the real life. So another, another angle that we are coming in is to be able to provide data. You know, after buying these properties, and that is why we actually started from the estate and working with the estate developers, we have a solution for them that we call the sitemap. Sitemap helps them to actually uh, digitize this layout okay. and place them on the map. So they can, act, they can put it on their own uh, website against those estates. They can also be able to have access to our partner banks and uh, issue mortgages and loans okay. to people buying their properties. So with this sitemap, we now said, okay, fine, since we have sitemap, let's also have a marketplace where we can display this property Properties. layout so that individuals like you, me, can actually assess these virtual properties from these estate developers and making th this now will start giving people access. When you have a virtual property that has a physical representation, 
it becomes easier for you to get access to loan. Okay. Maybe if you want to use that property, because the transaction histories are already recorded yeah, on the blockchain. Yeah, documented. Then you can also be able to transfer these properties maybe to someone else that a secondary in the secondary market where someone buys this where another person buys this property. So the title documents and other documents are attached into this uh, NFT of this virtual property yeah. so that it will be easier for you to transfer those property titles to another, to person, another, another person. person. So with this now, data can be easily, uh, data of property transactions can be easily uh, validated for a uh, risk-free property transaction maybe in the next time Great. in the secondary market. That, that's an interesting way to solve problems around real estate. First off, you, you talked about helping people see for themselves what they are purchasing using Metaverse. Yeah. Do you want to give us a quick definition of what Metaverse is for a layman who's watching right now? How okay. do they understand uh, Metaverse? Yeah, like I said, Metaverse is, uh, is I'll call it um, a door or a gate okay. between a virtual reality and a virtual world and, and the a real, real world. So uh, let me use Facebook as an example. Uh, Facebook has mentioned that they have changed their name to Meta. Meta and they have started um, giving us some avatars mm -hmm. that we can actually put into to look like us. Mm -hmm. So we'll start making use of those avatars to communicate to our friends and families. So when you send someone that avatar, let's say a happy avatar that looks like you, mm -hmm. so it makes it better for the person to un understand the feelings that you are at trying the, at to, the time. to communicate. So the same thing with uh, Snapchat. So you see that they have started, people have started just changing things to look like you in, yes. the, in the virtual world. world. So Metaverse now helps us to actually use the virtual reality to represent things that are in the, in real, the real world. world. So for example, let me use Mortal Kombat for, an, uh, for instance. Mm -hmm. We play Mortal Kombat, we can yeah. use Lucan as a character. Kitana, to, uh, get to play, you know, exactly. So, but in the metaverse now, you don't use Lucan, you use yourself. Yes. So you build your characteristics. In that particular. In that game, yeah. you understand? So you, you have something that looks exactly like you, yeah. that is behaving like you. So you can build those characteristics by some uh, virtual clothes, shoes, and everything to mm -hmm. equip yourself for that world. So that is how exactly it works. works. Exactly. That's it's why you see people buying clothes, buying shoes, virtual shoes, and all those. Like um, Adidas is already into Metaverse, where they sell virtual Adidas virtual shoes. Adidas shoes. Exactly. So <laughs> these are how the worlds are going, where you can be in the real world and operate virtually, but it's still you. Yeah, it's there exactly. So, in, in the case of House Africa, you are actually bringing about the real properties in Africa, yes. And then there's a representative of that property in the virtual world, exactly. And the virtual world here is just so that anywhere you are in the world, you can access those properties, you don't yes. have to be there. That's the role the virtual exactly. world is playing. Exactly. No, that's beautiful, yeah. that's nice. Now, by the name House Africa. I think, would, would I say, or should, let me ask, it's a question to you now. It's only solving African problems. Yes, be, uh, not, uh, like we can say Africa for now. For now, uh, okay. In the future, things can happen, we can go global. So why Africa for now? Why Africa is because this is, we, we have the most pressing need now. One is the challenges on uh, assessing these risk-free properties. Okay. It's, it's peculiar in to Africans. Africa or in the emerging market. So... Now, that is why we are really focusing in Africa. True. You mentioned challenges. So this is where we talk about some of the problems that comes with running real estate in Nigeria. Now, let's keep the virtual world aside. Yeah. Let's talk about real estate normally in Nigeria. What are some of the problems, some of the challenges that comes with doing real estate here in Nigeria um, or in Africa? The biggest challenge in the real estate business in Africa is trust. You're right. It's trust. Because people are skeptical. Is that land? And why is this trust? Why is trust the biggest challenge in Africa? 
because there is no proper data. Mm -hmm. The land registries are still on paper and has a whole lot of uh, errors. And uh, according to PwC um, report in 2019, um, about $900 billion are trapped in this residential real estate. Hmm. And these are dead assets. In Africa? Just Nigeria alone. Just Nigeria, $900 billion yes. trapped in residential real estate. Okay. So, um, and these traps is still because there is no proper data. And again, uh, we also understand that the, about 95% of lands in Nigeria are contestable. That means you can really take it to court and, and say, say this, this is, is yours. yours. It's not you. You are not the you owner of the land and all that. Because it's not registered anywhere. Only imagine... How many percent did you call that again? 95%. 95%. That's so a it's huge only one. Nine, it's only 5% of land in Nigeria, you can, you can easily say, is genuine. So, and that is where the problem is. And this cannot really... We can't really get done with this if uh, the government... Uh, and why this problem is becoming a whole lot of huge issues is because of um, the land registries are centered on the states. Okay, so the states, each state has their different land registries, and some self uh, goes down to the local government. Yeah. So you have those, with those things, you find it very difficult to be able to verify who owns what in this angle, and that is why we are coming in to make sure that we have uh, a property mm. record system, basically not just land registry, but basically a transactional record system that yeah. can say, oh, this is how someone bought this property from this estate developer and he has sold it to someone else like this. And this can increase uh, the trust in the property transaction. That's beautiful. So talking about this, we have just talked about real estate outside the virtual world. Yeah. Some of the challenges you, you observe. What about in the virtual world? Was it really easy for you to move virtually? Because House Africa is in a state have gotten to a stage that goes beyond operating the regular real estate. And now that's, that phase you metamorphosed into must not be just very easy. What are the challenges moving into that phase? Yeah, um, Africa is not like the rest of the world, uh, like, it's not like the Western world, yeah. where uh, people have already passed the stage of trying to feed themselves. Mm -hmm. So they can easily use the resources to do some other things. Well, here, well, with, but here, whichever business you are doing in Nigeria or Africa, your number one competitor is hunger. Hunger, hunger true. Exactly. So, um, so people usually first check, if I do this, will I be able to eat? <laughs> and all that thing. So we didn't want to like, uh, go into a virtual world and start selling a virtual real estate. Although, yeah, is what is actually running outside yes. Nigeria now. And that is why we said, instead of doing this, why not use it and solve the real problem that we are solving in Africa, in Africa. that is increasing the trust. So we use the virtual world to actually increase the trust of people buying the physical property. Then by solving our own by solving immediate our problems. Own problem. That makes a lot of sense. Now, this seems to me like the future of business. And I'm not in the space. I mean, you'll be in the best position to tell us what the future of business and real estate is like. What do you think the future of business in this niche would be? Yeah, we are looking at where people can now buy properties without actually saying, I want to um, visit for inspection and all that. Or you can not really, you might at least do a down payment before even saying, let me go and see. Mm -hmm. Because that trust is already there. You know, so you want to be the first person to buy before another person buys. We want to see that, I'm seeing in, uh, that rush coming in where you want to first put a down payment before someone else comes in because the trust will be there. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal is increase the, the trust and make it easier for people to just be, they can just wake up and say, oh, I love this property and I'm buying it right now mm -hmm. and no longer I'm sending my brother to go oh, and check it out. And all those things. You see everything online. And th therefore, that makes the marketplace busier. Exactly. And more money to that industry. Yeah. Okay, um, th this, this, this moves me to want to ask still. Let's start with this. Do you have a competitor in this niche? 
Yeah, a lot of competitors. Yeah, a lot of in this virtual yeah, of course, niche. Of course. Already you have course, competitors. <laughs> Great. So I, I was going to ask, how big is the market? And what do you think realtors can do in Africa to sustain this? This is interesting to me because beyond real estate, people can do this in other niches, business niches, not just real estate. You can, you can imbibe something like this into other business niches. Yeah. So I'm asking for that industry, that real estate niche, how big is it? How big is the marketplace? <clears throat> real estate is actually the biggest market in the whole world, globally. The biggest? Yes, it's the biggest. Uh, currently, uh, real estate global is about uh, $311 trillion. Mm -hmm. And Africa has about 4.4% of, of that. So, which is about uh, 40, either 40 something trillion dollars. dollars. And the Nigeria is playing at uh, Nigeria is playing at uh, 56 billion dollars, billion which dollars. is about five percent of our GDP. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that that's a lot. Yeah. Exactly. So, what do you think for us to sustain or grow that? How do you think realtors in Nigeria, in Africa, should play or should play in this space or do business? I didn't get that, sorry. For us to sustain or grow in that space, Nigeria is playing 5%, yeah. right? Of the entire GDP, real estate is doing 5%, yeah. right? It is going to be nice if it grows to a 10%. Exactly. Probably a 20%. What do you think realtors, real estate professionals in that space, in this Africa, in Nigeria, what do you think we could do to improve, to grow that percentage? Okay, first is collaboration, partnerships. Um, second is the use of technology mm -hmm. uh, because most of the directors are still coming up in the technology. Real estate is one of, not just only Nigeria per se, uh, real estate is one of the slowest uh, sector in terms of using technology. Mm -hmm. yeah, but COVID-19 has actually helped us to <coughs> start seeing the, uh, the technology com yeah, the technologies coming into the real estate. And people have started to understand that with technology, we can actually uh, facilitate real estate transactions. Mm -hmm. So uh, I see a lot of things happening in this space in the coming years because technology is actually coming in very fast. We see tokenizations of properties. Properties, we yeah. see other um, aspect of uh, property. Uh, uh, we see VR technology. We also see um, um, drone technology. So. These are the areas that can help real estate uh, to grow get better. better. Yeah. So with technology coming in, I believe real estate is going to become a second uh, fintech industry in Africa. Beautiful. Now you, you're hearing directly from Mr. Namde Oba, the CEO and co-founder at House Africa, telling us about exactly how he's been running the real estate business of Africa, trying to solve trust issues across Africa and Nigeria, therefore improving our GDP and, of course, making it bigger and the marketplace itself a busier one. We're still on this conversation and I'd like to ask this question. This should be you. This should be about yourself. Do you think that you are steps ahead of other realtors in the industry? <sighs> well... <laughs> Try not to be humble. <laughs> Try not to be humble. <laughs> Do you think you're steps ahead of other realtors in the oh, industry? Um, I wouldn't say I'm um, step ahead, okay? But in terms of applying technology, we are growing very fast. And of course, that's the future yeah, of the exactly. business. So <laughs> we are growing very fast. Okay, so he tried to be humble about that. I guess his answer, when in when when interpreted, or in other words, is yes, he's fast, he's far, he's way, way, way ahead. So, but with your with your with your knowledge, with the vast knowledge you have in this space and the experience so far, if you were to address a younger entrepreneurs who are looking to leverage on technology to go into business, either in this sector or in any other sector, what would you tell them? Um. <clears throat> First, I will start with uh, um, do things that make you happy. Great. And uh, when something is making you happy, that means you already have experience in that. So focus on that, no matter how small, then find a way of scaling. Beautiful. Do what makes you happy, find a way to scale. The truth is, nothing makes you happier than finding fulfillment in what you do. And I'll tell you, if you, if you lose everything in, the, in this world, 
you would never lose the things you've come to learn and the skills you have attained. And I'll tell you that is definitely going to make you happy. And talking about skills, one way you can get or one place you can get these skills is at daba.school. www.daba.school. You can also go to the um, Google Play Store and search for Daba, the app, download it. And then you get access to life changing skills skills that you will learn and put into practice in a space of mm -hmm. three to six months and you are already earning for yourself some good money and remember these skills will make you happy because nobody will take them away from you you can lose everything you have but you cannot lose the skills you learned that are with you to stay skills like affiliate marketing cryptocurrency trading skills like ui ux design graphics design cake baking drone piloting a lot of them on www.daba.school. Pay a visit to that website, download the Google Play Store app, and learn a skill today that makes you happy. We are still on Daba TV. This is the business data of the week. We're going to go for a short break. And when we come back, we are going to be having the fun section no, segment with um, Mr. Annamde Oba, where we're going to play five quick questions. He doesn't have to really think before he answer these questions. But we'll be right back, and we'll play that game. Welcome back from the short break. This is Daba TV and I am Emeka Eze. With me in the studio is Mr. Namde Oba, the CEO and co-founder of House Africa. That is a, a brand that is looking to leverage on technology to solve Africa's problem in the real estate sector. We've had an interesting conversation. We've talked about House Africa, how they're solving problems, how they are bridging the gap between um, losing a lot of funds in scam issues in, Af in Africa and Nigerian real estate and how they've come in between to make it really easy for us to do real estate and do it with real peace of mind. Of course, you can't take technology out from everything and the industry is going to get bigger by the time. And of course, we've come to that segment where we just play a game. Five quick questions, Mr. Ndambi. Um, this one is really interesting. You don't really have to think deeply before you answer. Some of them are going to be requiring polar answers, just straight up answers and all that. So let's do this. Number one, skyscraper in a mega city or a bungalow by the beach? A bungalow by the beach. Why, 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 why? Why, why bungalow by the beach? <laughs> that breeze. <laughs> that peaceful breeze. <laughs> peaceful breeze. <laughs> but if you're in a skyscraper, you get fresh air. Oh, but you, 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 I'm you, someone that is afraid of heights. Height. Right? Okay, so <laughs> skyscraper is no, yes. no, no for yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we are particular about the peace in the breeze. He said peaceful that breeze. Peace. <laughs> peaceful breeze is All right. So number two, if you could turn the hands of time, would you still want to be born in this era and century? Yes, of course. Why? What's your why? You've not lived in other centuries. Have you imagined what it would feel like to live in, in the uh, past? We have watched movies. We, watch, <laughs> we have seen most of these epic movies. Yeah. Imagine when somebody is using candle or yeah. other, I can't even do that. You still want to be born <laughs> well, exactly. here. <laughs> exactly. He loves the good life. That's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the third question is, which is, what is one place you really want to visit? Um, I've not been to Dubai. I think uh, that is really where I want to why would you want to go to Dubai? Everybody's going to Dubai. It should be boring yeah. just by now. Why? Yeah, Dubai is, um, I can call it a tech hub space. A tech hub space. Yes. Now, I, I, was, I was even told that, um, I think the first NFTs, so, so I don't, I'm not really, let me not really say what I'm not sure of, but I know there is a station, there is a lab where NFTs are being minted in Dubai. Like, real person NFTs are being minted. Uh, in Dubai. I'm not sure of that, but I know there are a lot of technologies, technologies in Dubai, in Dubai that are really and from Dubai the... is uh, another country that uh, invests so much in technology. Technology, yeah. yeah. Imagine the, uh, the that building in, in Dubai. Dubai. 
to run advertisement in that building. That that color, I can't remember the name. Was it not, is it that it's not a hotel? No, it's a hotel. A hotel that has a golf, I mean a lawn tennis court no, at the top. Is it that? I don't know the name actually, mm -hmm. but they usually do this uh, Happy New Year on mm -hmm. that yeah, hotel yeah. and all those things. Imagine running an ad on that hotel is hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> That's a lot of the, money. Yeah, it's the to the economy. So, and you know, when technology makes these things happen, uh, you see them look cheap, but they are very, very good. It, it makes you imagine putting your bed, happy birthday there. Yeah. And uh, your name shows them, it, it gives you a fulfillment. Yes, but, and your 100,000 is in their economy. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, that's fine. So, the one place he really wants to visit is Dubai because he sees it as the tech hub of the world. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, beautiful. Now, this is the next question 50 million dollars and no internet for the rest of your life. Or internet and a marketplace for life now everything you have will be taken away from you you'll be given a marketplace and internet the marketplace is it for food or what? whatever it is there's a marketplace yeah. then you have internet the internet should help you decide where you want to you know to go, right? to go. Huh? but there is 50 million dollars with, and with no internet million, with 50 million dollars you're not allowed to get internet i know i know with 50 million dollars yeah then what would i use it to buy no internet. You can live, eat food, yes, live exactly. life, It doesn't make sense anymore. It doesn't make sense anymore. Because so you would rather do the internet. Exactly. Because with, in, with internet is like bringing the whole place closer to you. Yeah. So with 50 million years, you can actually travel to the whole place directly. Mm -hmm. But you can still make that 50 million and still have your internet. Interesting. Beautiful. And finally, in one word, would, could you please define the future of tech? In one word, I can call it, uh, I wish I can use two. One word. But since it's one, I can use huge. Hmm. Tech is something huge. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I wish I can right, use So two. what two words are you going to come back? Something combine? huge. Some <laughs> <laughs> All right, so to me, stand up the tech is something huge. Wow. And the funny thing is, tech stares at all of us. Yes. The question is, are you taking advantage of it? Again, I would say we are no longer in the jobs economy, we are in the skills economy. Exactly. And the truth is the jobs of, of the future are no longer taught in schools. I'm quoting Chris Annie now, the CEO at um, Digital Abundance Business Academy. The truth is, if you really want to get relevant in the future, start learning skills that pays you off and makes you comfortable. Live the kind of life you really want to live. And those schools are taught at www, those skills are taught at www.dabar.school. It's been a fun time, Mr. Namdi Oba, with you. you. It's really you. great having this conversation with you. And I'm glad that you're here today. We hope that we'll have many more, uh, we get to see more of House Africa. I mean, buy more properties. I don't have to visit Namdi Oba to, you know, exactly. get properties. And that is what, what we want, where you just stay at your home. And, and then make these purchases. Beautiful. So how do we get across to house africa how do we locate you is there an app is there a, a linkedin account is there a social media website how do we get to yeah um you can get to house africa at uh, houseafrica.io .io. yeah the mar our marketplace is launching in a few days okay currently we have uh, sitemap.com where we actually uh, work with the estate developers currently yeah. but the marketplace is launching in a few days let's say uh, in the next 10 to 14 days okay a marketplace. so that's where we see all the properties all the estates that house africa is in charge of yes. and then we can pick the properties yes. that we're interested so you in. can now go to houseafrica.io slash marketplace to join the, uh, the, the marketplace wait list. the wait list for the marketplace, marketplace yes. yeah one question i wanted to, to really ask do you deal in already developed properties or you can also deal with developing properties Yes, we do with all all, all yes. properties. Uh, mostly the land. Mm -hmm. Although what we are digitizing and putting on the platform are yeah. land. So we digitize the land. So when you come to the land, you can the uh, the virtual state allows you to know if it's just a bare land or, or there's, there's a, property. a property on it. Exactly. That's beautiful. So this is just for clarity, so that whoever is like yes. viewing this right now yeah. gets the real information. You've heard from Mr. Nam Deoba, the CEO and co-founder at House Africa. I had fun running this episode and I believe you also did. Until we come your way next week, I remain Emeka Eze. This is Digital 
Abundance Business Academy TV. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and share our content with your friends and family. Thank you for watching and see you next week.